So the next thing I want to do is start um, moving into detailing. So we've got a block out. We're quite happy with the overall shape. The, the primary forms are all there. So now what we want to do is start thinking about areas like the face um, and, and the overall look and feel of the, of, of the character or the creature in this case. So I'm going to add a little bit of paint first of all. I'm just going to paint him a little bit. Uh, put some, I like this kind of reds and, and, and burgundies in this one here. So I'm just going to lighten him up a little bit. So um, make sure with the settings that the opacity is quite low. And let's just see what that gives me. So that gives me, yeah, just like a reddish tinge around here. We'll leave the blacks going up into the into these horns um, and spikes, but we'll just bring this round a little bit around here. And that's starting to look a little bit more visually interesting. A smaller brush, so it gives us a bit more kind of wouldn't say an alpha, we'll, we'll look at the alphas later on, but with alphas are where we use a black and white image to drive some of this shape. I just wanted some colour around the areas that I'm going to sculpt on in a moment. And then around the edge, we're going to go quite light. So I'm going to define something like this sort of edge here. So you can see me coming around here. And I'll put this line up over the top like this. And I'm going to use that to sculpt to. So I'm giving it a little bit of visual interest. It's a little, again, I've said this in the in the first video, it's a bit made up, um, but we're not really worried because this is more about technique than anything else. So let's go and have a look at clay build up again. And we'll go right in this time and we'll just start adding some, some nice visual interest. So I'm gonna build up something that looks like there's some interest going into this horn here, like so. And then as I've done it, I'm going to smooth it back straight away. So you can see this. I'm looking at here where there's some, um, I wouldn't say uh, ridges, more like striations going out into the, into the front of this horn. And then I'll smooth them back right into the eye. You can see there now, it's just giving us that interest. We're going to give it something like an eye in here, like so. And if we've, if we've done the eye now, We'll go around it and just give it a bit more of a frame. We'll leave that indent in there. That's around there. Bear in mind it's an insect eye, so it's not like it's not like our eye at all. So that's close enough there. And now I want to bring this sort of shell around here like this, uh, the ridge of the of the head like around here, like so. And then I'm going to bring that right to the front like that and then smooth that back behind it like so. And you can see just with this little bit of surface detailing, um, which isn't really surface detail at the moment, we're still doing what I'd call secondary forms here. Um, but it's giving us something that looks starts to look a bit more eye-catching. It looks a little bit more like the real world because it's got imperfections in it. And anything anything where we can start adding these kind of uh, little bits of what, what, little bits of area that will catch the light. So as you, the thing, if I zoom out now straight away, just with that little bit of sculpting, you can see that it's given us a little bit of visual interest that the light is falling on. So that's that's quite useful. And we're going to come round here underneath, and he's got some mouth parts underneath, which we're not going to be able to go and research. I haven't got enough time to really research. So I just want to suggest that there's mouth parts, mandibles going on down here. So I'll do something like this. And we'll leave that to the imagination underneath. And it's a 3D print that we're aiming for, so you're not going to be seeing underneath too much anyway. So we'll get we'll get an idea that there's a mandible coming down here. Like so. And then that will catch that from the side, so we'll be able to see that from the side quite well. Smooth that down a bit, and then here we go around here now. Let's bring this up here. Got a nice ridge coming around the side now. All the way up the back. A 
and then just a bit tighter so I'm just making the brush a little bit smaller like so and then Bit more volume on the neck and now I'm going to use the move tool so what I want to do is go move and we're going to pull this back tighter like so and because we're pulling it tighter there it will tighten up this this it's kind of like where the the helmet or the the back of the head and it looks like a helmet will be you know it will go over the top of this carapace and that's really going to help us um, because it, it it basically covers up something which means it catches light and gives us that that shading that we like and you know gives us the the visual interest that we keep talking about so that's looking really good underneath there now bring that in and we could inflate that if you feel if you feel that that needs to be any tighter then an inflate would do that there and now we've come right to this front and we'll bring this this uh, looks almost like a forehead down now and there we go so that's definitely looking a little bit more how we, how we would want it so let's just go in and use the move tool again now I'll just put some finishing touches in here so a bit sharper on that point there and a bit further out on this one here like so same up here smooth it down with a small brush and it shouldn't cause any problems and I don't mind that being a bit jagged there anyway because it's, it's right at the tip and this one will do the same here we'll just bring this one down and smooth it down to get the to get the you know the the, the, the amount of polygons we need to make it sharp like that and that curve is nice there. So we got that right early on. So I was quite happy with that right from the start. Now, let's just go back and paint um, with black and a low opacity all around this eye socket here. Because I think this should really be dark round underneath this. And I think that should go right to black on the tips. Again, this is only for us inside of, of, of Shape Lab. It's not for the 3D printing. It doesn't, doesn't come out at all for the 3D printing. Um, but there you go. That looks, that looks all right. Now, what I will do is I'll pick a creamy colour. And while we're thinking about painting, we'll do this underside a little bit lighter again. So that we could really see that there's a different colour going on underneath. And we'll do that right up to where the legs are. Okay, so that's that bit done. So we'll just colour pick that orange. So, so you use the colour picker, and you pick that wherever you want. So you've got the you've got the orange selected, and then back to clay build up, and we'll do we'll come round here now, and we'll build this edge up here a little bit, just above the legs. So you can build it up and smooth it down in in sort of like stroke after stroke. So build it up smooth it down, build it up over those legs and then smooth it down and that's working really well bit of an error there for some reason, it's a bit, it's a bit weird and so that looks good and then let's just make sure that there's a nice crease going all the way down the back to the to the bottom of the carapace here like so and that will come round and meet down here that ridge that we've just done and I'm putting some more ridges back in as you can see and hopefully you can see with the way that this material is showing it that catches the light quite well and I'm not going to smooth that down too much keep that keep that quite okay there now what I have just noticed is I think we could get away with a bit more um, I think this could could come out like this, like like that over the top. So that kind of fitted really well there, um, and that's given us some nice detail on on the carapace. So I'm quite happy with that a little bit now. So I think what I'll do is I'll put some more painting detail on there. 
so I'm going to go black, I'm going to go opacity quite high, I'm going to turn off the symmetry so I can do it um, without it you know, being symmetrical because we don't want this to get repetitive and I'm just putting some black dots, you can see it on this one here because um, we're essentially making something along those kind of lines there you can see the shape, the silhouette's looking quite strong now. Um, and some on this side. Just randomly putting dots around. Up to the front. Put a few more around the back. Nice small ones now. Bit labour intensive doing dots, uh, so it would be nice to get an alpha to do these. But then it looks more less predictable when you do it by hand. A few, you know, a few at a time like this. If you're doing lots and lots of them, you'd probably want to come up with another solution. And there we go. Let's go back to the move tool, and I'm just going to close down this carapace a little bit. So this is like the fold where the where the wings are. Don't forget to turn symmetry back on, as I just didn't. So bring it in. See how it's leaving that gap in the middle. I'm pulling it out a bit more now as we get towards the end of the wings. And I'm going to do this, pull them right out and round for the end. So that's slightly different than we had it. And then just smooth that a bit there. So, so that looks better from the back. And now the last thing I want to do from a detailing point of view is just put a bit more um, detailing underneath. So I'm going to go back to the um, clay build up. I want, um, before we do that with the paint, I want to colour pick the underneath. Then back to our um, clay build up again. And let's just make sure there's plenty of volume underneath where the arm's going to be. Because we're 3D printing it, I want to make sure there's no weakness in any of the, you know, the joints or anywhere where the where the limbs are going to be. We just so we just need to make sure that there's plenty of geometry around it there, and we can make up the carapace anywhere. The other, I don't, I don't know what it's called, the the underneath bit. The carapace is the top, so the the belly, the underside. This is the bit I don't like on cockroaches. It always looks a bit nasty. Um, there we go. Looks like a little chest actually, so it's probably not accurate, but it would it it will be fine for what we want. Um, so that's all looking good now. So now what we, we we might want to do is just go along with pinch and crease. So what we've done so far is all building things up. So the pinch and crease is going to give us little marks in the surface like this. So let me show you somewhere. Let's go here. It's just giving us a little bit of surface detail, so I'll up the strength so you can really see it. There we go. So if you do get tired of doing the black dots, then you can just use an alpha mask, as I said. So if you go to the paintbrush, and you look at alpha here, this little square, and then you pick something that's got the dots that you want, so either something like this, or more usefully this, lots of dots. Um, make sure you go back to the black, and then just you can just basically paint, make sure you are on the right model, and then you can just paint wherever you want those dots. Now, the reason I do them by hand is because it probably looks a bit more predictable. Um, the minute you start doing it with a, a brush with symmetry on like this, you get some unpredictability. And then we'll just change the color of that a little bit as well. We'll do a, bit, a few white ones at the top up here. As you can see, we'll just give that a little bit of a, a pebble dash of white, knock the opacity down, and we'll splatter a few around here, around the underside as well, just to give, again, some visual interest. And there you go, so that's a, that's a detail pass done. So now let's export this and then we'll have a look at it 
ready for 3D print. So we're going to export it by going here and we'll go export and we're just going to name it. We'll call it, well, first of all, we'll choose OBJ because that's the standard that I quite like to use. We'll come up to name naming. We've already got print eight here save. So we'll go backspace and we'll call it nine. So beetle all on print nine and we'll save it as an OBJ and export that. And then we can go and have a look at that file in another program like ZBrush.